I'm going to present, I'm a relativistic Monte Carlo, which is joint work with Xiao Yulu, Leonard Hansen, Clever Iwete, and Sebastian Ballmer from the University of Oxford. So what's the main idea? Um, stochastic gradient MCNC methods are an important mainstay of Bayesian machine learning, as they have allowed to scale it up to high dimensions by using many batches of your data set. On the other hand, um, MCNC methods based on the simulation of dynamical systems, such as Hamiltonian Monte Carlo, are an important tool in Bayesian methodology as they allow to, for more efficient explorations of your target distribution. So we'd like to put together the strengths of these two worlds, and at the same time, we want to overcome some shortcomings that HMC faces. As an important consideration where designing such algorithms is adaptation to the geometry of your target distribution. And with this respect, Hamiltonian Monte Carlo suffers from some problems. First of all, it's very sensitive to the choice of the step size, and its mass metrics is very hard to tune. And when there are mismatches between your target distribution and your momentum, then you can have very low performance. So for all these reasons, we develop a new novel set of algorithms, the relativistic Monte Carlo algorithms, that try to achieve better stability by imposing a maximum speed to the particle changes, which is given by the speed of light. So stepping back for a minute, let's consider the standard Hamiltonian Monte Carlo setting, where you're trying to sample from a posterior distribution f of theta which can be written as uh, directly proportional to the exponential of minus u of theta. So you can interpret your parameter as a particle moving in a physical system according to the Hamiltonian equations, given where the Hamiltonian is given by uh, the sum of a potential energy and a kinetic energy. Now, the standard Hamiltonian uh, Monte Carlo setting leads to this, those leapfrog step equations where you can see that the update over your parameter theta is given by epsilon times p divided by m, where this is the velocity of your particle. The problem is that if your target distribution has very peak gradients or the scales of the gradients vary across dimensions, then your momentum variable can get really large so that you can take overly large steps. You can tune the mass parameter by making it lower so that the speed of your particles is higher so as uh, to get a better mixing, but this can also lead to an accumulation of error, discretization error. If the mass parameter is too large, then the parameters can travel too slowly so that you get poor mixing. So what we want to do is to have a direct control on how fast your parameters change over, during your iterations, and we do this by resorting to Einstein's special relativity. We modify the kinetic energy in Hamiltonian Monte Carlo with the relativistic one, which is now given by mc squared times the square root of that term over there. The main difference is that now particles cannot travel faster than c, which is the speed of light, which guarantees a direct control on how fast your parameters change so as to gain better stability. On the other hand, the parameter m controls the rest mass of your particles and has a direct impact on the average speed of your parameter changes. So to give a more concrete example, let's translate these ideas into an algorithm which is very similar to the standard Hamiltonian Monte Carlo algorithm, with the difference being that if you look at the update over the parameter theta, now this is given by the product of epsilon times m to the minus one times p, the momentum variable. When your gradient, your target distribution has very peaked gradients, the momentum can be too large. This is not a problem in this setting as the parameter change cannot uh, be larger than epsilon times c, which is the speed of light. So epsilon times c is preventing the parameter from taking too large steps, which allows us to control the stability of the sampler. Also, an important consideration for designing these kinds of stochastic gradient MCNC algorithms is that the parameter changes have to be controlled for each coordinately separately. This is what happens in popular deep learning optimizers such as Adam and Adegrad, where you try to normalize gradients for each dimension separately. 
so that you can better adapt to the local geometry of your target distribution. And this is possible by, your, by having a mass matrix and a speed of light which is different for each dimension. So we first looked at some toy examples to demonstrate these ideas. We have uh, four distributions, uh, two-dimensional banana distribution and three Gaussian mixture models with different variances. And we compare the ESS, the effective sample size, the higher the better, and the mean absolute error, the lower the better. What you can clearly see here is that the relativistic algorithm were compared to the standard Newtonian, Hamiltonian Monte Carlo, is much more robust to the choice of the step size, particularly when the gradients of your target distribution, such as in model three, in GMM3, are spanning a larger range of values. Also given the optimal value of the step size, the relativistic algorithm is also achieving uh, better performance. We have a good understanding of how to tune these parameters C and M in fact, if we look at the contour plots of, on the left, which is the contour plot of the ESS for a set of values of step size and step system C, you have that these values separate well and allow you for easy tuning. The step system C, again, is controlling what's the maximum step that your parameter can take, while the step size is, as usual, the time discretization. If you look at the contour plots on the right, we have overlaid two counter plots, uh, an ESS and the average speed divided by the speed of light for a range of values of mass and step size. What you can see from this plot is that the average speed actually correlates really well with the efficiency of your sampler. And as we have a monotonic relationship between the mass parameter and your average speed, this allows for easy adaptation. Now, Going back to the stochastic MCMC framework, our initial goal is to, was to scale up Bayesian deep learning by using many batches of our data sets. And we do this by um, describing a novel stochastic gradient MCMC algorithm, which is the relativistic stochastic gradient HMC, which is given by these two equations here. What I want to point out is that if you look at the update over theta, it is given by epsilon times the inverse of the mass matrix times p. And if you write this explicitly, you can see how this is given by the momentum divided by the square root of the L2 norm of the momentum. This is reminiscent of what happens in popular deep learning optimizers, such as Adam, Adegrad, RMS prop, where the idea is trying to normalize gradients for each dimension individually so as to better adapt to the local geometry of your distribution. So it is interesting how a set of algorithms that are revised from a fully Bayesian setting have actually these surprising connections to deep learning optimizers. We test our stochastic gradient MCMC uh, models uh, over, over a logistic regression example showing that the in terms of Stein discrepancy, the lower the better, the relativistic algorithms are much more stable and achieve better mixing. Now turning to more complex examples, it is interesting to compare our approach with a preconditioned version of SGLD, which is, um, we consider Adam SGLD, which is a version of SGLD which uses an Adam-like preconditioner to normalize gradients. What we noticed on this uh, neural network example on, a simple, on the simple Pima Indian data set is that the relativistic algorithms perform better in the sense that if you use uh, an Adam-like preconditioner uh, to, uh, for adaptation in SGLD, you have that in the first iteration, the injecting noise blows up. And this leads to very uh, low performance in the first iterations and so a, high, a large time to recover. So what we're doing is performing adaptation to the local geometry of your target distribution in a different way, in a way that is inbuilt in within uh, the mass matrix, which is now a function of the momentum. And this way of performing adaptation is much more resistant to these kinds of instabilities. Uh, turning to an MNIST example, we compare our RFG algorithm, which is the relativistic stochastic gradient descent, 
which you, we obtain by taking the zero temperature limit of uh, stochastic relativistic stochastic gradient HMC. This idea is similar to what has been done in Santa's paper, where you take the limit, the zero temperature limit of a stochastic gradient Bayesian sampler to recover an optimizer, which gives you a maximum a posteriori estimate. It's interesting, once again, to see the link between Bayesian um, samplers and optimizers that can be useful, that are widely used in deep learning. So we compare our relativistic stochastic gradient descent against Adam and uh, Santa SGD, where by Santa SGD we mean the zero temperature limit of Santa, so that we compare optimizers. What we can see here is that uh, our algorithm achieves state-of-the-art performance and it's comparable in performance with Adam. And if you look at the 100 in the unit architecture, our algorithm performs significantly better. So to conclude, we have developed a novel set of algorithms, the relativistic Monte Carlo algorithms, which are much more robust to the choice of parameters, such as the step size, and to the noise of the stochastic gradient. We have that our algorithm connects in an interesting way to deep learning optimizers, such as Adam, Adagrad, RMF prop, and achieves state-of-the-art performance over neural network models, where it's particularly important to adapt uh, your updates for each coordinate individually. And finally, we have modified the kinetic energy using the relativistic one to achieve um, maximum allowable velocity. But clearly, this could be the kinetic energy could be modified in a variety of ways to achieve different properties. So I'm happy to take any questions you might have. Thank you very much. I could ask a question here. Um, so I wonder, should I be using your method now as an optimizer? In other words, if you plot your test accuracy curves against wall clock time, do you do better than Adam as well? Our algorithm is not um, particularly computationally expensive, so I guess that if you, if you, you want to use our zero temperature limit algorithm, RSGD, I think it's pretty competitive on um, um, neural network examples, so I guess there will be a, a, a good choice. Um, so uh, how does this compare to Riemannian? I'm over here. Uh, how does this compare to Riemannian manifold Hamiltonian Monte Carlo, which I think Blake claimed the RHMC uh, initialism first, but it also tries to compensate for, you know, adjusting the mass matrix as a function of the, of the geometry in the problem? Yeah, that's a very good question. There is a close link between these two algorithms. The difference is that both algorithms try to exploit geometric information about the target distribution to achieve better performance. The difference is that in our case, we are doing this adaptively via the mass matrix by making it dependent on the momentum. So we do not need to resort to high order geometric uh, differential geometry information, and we do not need to resort to higher order uh, integration schemes. So the difference is that our approach is simpler in this sense while achieving the same goal. Okay, so let's thank the speaker again.